Hey everybody, welcome to the History of D&D Weekly for August 1st, 2020. I'm your host, DM Galabond. All right, today on the History of D&D Weekly, we are going to be digging a little bit into the equipment rules as far as original D&D is concerned. Um, you know, we've talked about creating characters and the classes and the differences in spell casting and that kind of stuff. And there are some important differences with the equipment as well uh, for people who are coming from like let's say fifth edition and who are not used to these older rules. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, um, in, the, in the rule book that we're using, uh, it tells you a little bit about starting money. Now you may know from fifth edition that you have a uh, a choice whether you take starting money or whether you build equipment packs by strictly the rules as written there's no such thing as an equipment pack in um, original D&D &D. Uh, everybody just rolls 3d6 multiplies that by 10 and that's the money you get to start your character with you may roll well and you get a lot of money and you can buy a lot of stuff and you may look roll poorly and you don't have a whole lot which means you start off with a very little and then you have to kind of scrounge for what you can as you go through the game uh, so you have anywhere from 30 to 180 gold to start with and no equipment and you have to buy everything uh, the conversions uh, it's all the same uh, units of coin that you're used to dealing with the conversions vary a little bit from game from game edition to game edition so uh, a silver piece is worth 10 copper pieces and a gold piece is worth uh, two electrum or 10 silver or 100 copper uh, the electrum is worth five silver or 50 copper uh, and a platinum is worth five gold now normally in some editions you're used to platinum being worth 10 gold but in this edition it's worth five gold 10 electrum 50 silver and 500 copper so that's an important distinction to keep in mind um, then the weapons table um, you have the different weapons and it's all uh, laid out by category uh, axes, bows, bludgeon, uh, daggers, and there are several things that are a little bit different here. Like there's a blackjack, and that doesn't appear in a whole lot of other editions of the game. Uh, but uh, that is a that is essentially a weapon that is used for non-lethal combat. It's used to basically knock out an opponent. It will do uh, one or two points of damage, but then you get a chance to roll on it to see if you knock your, your opponent out when you hit him with a blackjack. Um, and then there are some other uh, lesser known uh, uh, weapons like the bolas and the cestus uh, so we'll take a look at what those uh, special weapons are i mean all the traditional weapons axes daggers swords um, pole arm weapons shield weapons there's some kind of funky shield weapons there's like a horn shield a knife shield uh sword shield uh tusk shield uh, those are kind of interesting but uh, let's take a look at the Bola, the Cestus, and the Blackjack. So where's the Blackjack? Okay. Small leather sack, uh, four to eight inches long, filled with sand or metal shot and with a loop strap attached. Causes little damage to use to strike a victim's head or neck and impossibly stun or cause unconsciousness. Um, 
and so you can't use it against we uh, enemies in certain types of armor uh, or the metal helmet. Um, and then the DM makes a ruling, you know, if it's kind of a gray area, the DM will rule, and so they, you know, give some potential options of uh, penalties or bonuses for hitting. Uh, if you score a... Okay, if the attack does hit the target's head, consult the weapon special effects table. Victim must make a saving throw versus death ray. Um, if he fails the saving throw, he suffers additional effects shown on the table as determined by his hit dice. Um, so now this is like, oh, wait a minute. Weapon special effects? Yes, weapons have special attacks. So victims level their hit dice up to one. Uh, one plus one to three. Now, there's all this funky stuff, and we will talk about monsters in a future uh, version of this. But it's going to be a very a future episode of this History of D&D &D Weekly. Uh, very general introduction to monsters, and basically it's to help you figure out what the hell this means with things like one plus one hit dice. Basically what it means is it means it's a one hit die creature with special abilities um, so that would be a one plus one uh, which it's not as powerful as a two hit dice creature but is more powerful than a one hit dice creature so they just do one one plus one i don't know how they came up with that or what they uh what they decided to do but that's what they did okay so uh Depending on their level, they get a bonus to saving throws against these, um, against the bolas, nets, or whips. Uh, and then there's um, uh, blackjack special effects and blowgun special effects. So they get saving throws, none against a knockout. Um, one plus two plus three plus four plus five. Uh, the bull and the nether whip, they can entangle or slow or delay. Um, blackjack can knock out, stun, or delay. And then a blowgun can potentially poison somebody. So the blackjack, uh, the, a knockout is the victim is immediately unconscious and remains helpless for uh, 1d100 rounds. <laughs> so you roll d100, and that's how many rounds are knocked out. So you could you could hit somebody and knock them out for like 100 rounds. Now, in original D&D, rounds are 10 seconds each. So there's six rounds in a minute. So if you knock somebody out for 60 rounds, you, that's knocked them out for 10 minutes. All right. Uh, stun. The victim is stunned and will remain stunned until he successfully makes a saving throw versus death ray. You may try to make a new saving throw each round. Or delayed. Victim is mildly dazed. He loses initiative on the next round. Okay. Uh, blowgun is a tube from six inches to four feet long. Uh, dart or thorn. And basically, uh, it does really pretty much no damage, um, but it only does poison. And um, there, you know, the use of deadly poison as a weapon is not a good act. Because of its dangers, poison may be declared illegal by local or regional rulers. In this case, lawful characters do not typically use it. DM may choose to not allow player characters to use poisons as campaigns. Okay, so... Um, and then also remind players that if they want their characters to use blowguns, monsters are going to have them as well. All right, bola is a weapon with a cord with weighted balls on either end, whirled around and thrown at a victim. Causes very little damage, but it may entangle, slow, or delay. So, like if you, if it wraps around their legs, you know, then they can't move. They get entangled and they might fall down. Um. So, uh, attack roll is a twenty. Not counting in a modifier's victim must make a saving throw over his death ray or be immediately paralyzed. And they will die in they will die in one D six plus two 
rounds from strangling unless rescued. So on a 20, that means you've wrapped the bola around the neck so hard that they're um, that they've fallen over and they're going to suffocate and be strangled to death by it. Um, and if freed, victim remains effectively paralyzed for another 2d6 rounds. Creatures do not breathe, such as constructs are immune. The attack roll is successful and not a 20. Victim must face saving throw versus death ray. Uh, so successful has no effect except damage. Veils, victim fails a saving throw. The result varies by the victim's experience level or size on, according to the special effects table. Um, the victim may make a new uh, saving throw. Um, every round okay excellent uh during hand-to-hand -hand combat phase of each round until one is successful all right possible bola effects listed are entangle again victim cannot attack cast spells or move until saving throw is successful slow they're slowed moving and attacking at half their normal rate and delayed they lose they lose individual initiative uh, for the next round the uh, and bolas are only affected against solid creatures, raised specters, and ethereal creatures cannot be um, cannot be uh, used. And cestus is that glove that has the um, that wrapped around the hand and with rough cutting edges on the back. So it's a little bit different from brass knuckles, where it's something that will uh, that's designed to um, deal increased uh, punching damage by, uh, you know, bludgeoning somebody. It's more like it's got blades there so that when you punch somebody, it actually cuts them uh, with those blades along the back of the hand. Uh, so that's what the Cestus is. And, and that's based on a weapon uh, that was used by the Romans. Uh, both in battle and in the gladiatorial arenas. All right, so that is what we have for weapons. Now, armor. This gets into armor class as well. An armor class is weird in this edition. Armor class works backwards. If you're familiar with 5e, you know that the higher the armor class is, the harder it is to hit. And that's based on meaning that the armor class number is the number you need to roll on your attack roll in order to connect. That's not how it's always been. In an original D&D, um, the lower the armor class, the better it was. And you've actually have to have a table and we are going to look at the armor class table and this is something that drives a lot of people crazy the good thing is that because we're going to be playing our game in roll 20 and because it's set up with a an original D, D character sheet the armor class is all calculated for you so if you use the macros on the character sheet to do your attacks it will tell you in the chat on roll 20 that you hit armor class x um, and you know the lower that number the better your roll was and of course like every roll everything in roll 20 if you hover over it it will actually con show you what the actual die roll number was but it converts that into the armor class that you hit so you don't have to do the calculation in your head um, so suit armor uh, is that's basically when they say suit armor they're basically talking about uh, armor that you would wear for jousting it's like full head-to-toe plate uh, plate mail is plates of armor on a chain mail thing and um, suit armor is AC zero uh, plate mail is uh, AC three banded males AC four chain mails AC five scale mail AC six Leather armor is AC7, and then a shield gives you a minus one AC bonus. 
Yes, I know. Minus one bonus. Okay. Uh, again, this is something to get used to with first with original edition. Actually, I think first and second edition use these rule to, rules too. It wasn't until third edition, I believe, that they went to the modern, um, you know, an armor class of 17 means it takes a 17 attack to hit it. All right. Uh, so here's... Uh, some of these things. Okay, adventuring gear. All right, so adventuring gear, there's all kinds of things that you can have. There's animals, obviously, um, and there's uh, all the animals have a different movement rate, uh, encumbrance uh, to, for their full movement, and encumbrance for half movement. Uh, so how much weight they can carry. And encumbrance is measured in coins, but basically 10 coins is a pound. So when you see this where it says uh, draft horse encumbrance is 4,500 coin weight, that means it's 450 pounds. Um, adventuring gear. So you've got all your uh, typical stuff. Uh, capacity for a backpack is 40 pounds. Uh Belt, boots, cloaks, clothes, iron spikes, um, and then description and notes on all of this stuff. Uh, the uh, uh, they, they specify that the one thing you don't need to buy in equipment is just a set of starting clothes. You know, it's like they're not going to make you show up naked at the market and. Uh, uh, try to buy all that stuff. So you have land equ land transportation equipment. Uh, you might have animals to pull um, a transit. You have vehicles, uh, so or or gear that you need: saddle and tack, saddle bags, uh, carts, uh, wagons, and then there's water transportation. So uh, anything from a canoe to a sailing galley or a war galley. Uh, so you've got tons of different things. And the, uh, you'll notice that on these vehicles, they all have hull points and they all have an armor class. So uh, when we get into siege equipment and you talk about uh, combat for siege there are certain weapons that actually deal damage against structures and a ship would be a structure okay um, then let's see what else do we have here ah speaking of siege equipment here we go so siege equipment uh, you have ballistas catapults trebuchet boars and rams and then, um, you know, the armor class that they have, how many hit points they have, uh, how many people it takes to operate each siege engine, siege weapon, uh, the damage that each one does, and then the rate of fire. So when it says one per two, that means it fires once every two rounds. Um, and then... There's some miscellaneous siege equipment, uh, uh, belfry, gallery shed, hoist, ladder, mantlet, timber fort, um, and then they have illustrations of some of these things as well. Okay, so uh, that is an introduction to equipment in, in this edition. And the one thing I said we were going to do as I said, we were going to look at uh, combat uh, for the purposes of the uh, attack tables. So let's take a look at attack rules. And I think that's where, yes, here we go. All right, so this is where this is where you determine if you were playing this game 
at a table, you would need to have this table in front of you for your character to help you determine what armor class you hit when you roll a 20. So if you're a normal man or a normal woman, that is a human that is not an adventurer. Uh, they hit armor class zero on only a 20. And then as you look back here, you'll see that basically every armor class that goes up from armor class zero, it takes one less to hit them on a roll of d20. So uh, takes a natural 20 to hit a zero, a 19 to hit a one, 18 to hit a two, 17 to hit a three, so on and so forth. Uh, if you, and then this is also magic user. MU stands for magic user. So magic user, level 1 through 5, level 6 through 10, level 11 through 15, 16 through 20, 21 through 25, all the way up to 36. All right, so a first level magic user um, has a 19 to hit armor class 0. So they want to hit an armor class 7, they have to roll a 12. A C is a cleric, T is a thief, D is a druid. So a first level cleric, uh, thief, or druid, uh, they would have to hit 19 to an armor class 0, 12 to an armor class 7. A fighter, first through third level fighter, same thing, 19 to an armor class 0, 12 to an armor class 7. And demi-humans, uh, all right, now, you remember when we looked at the, uh, at the demi-humans and they go up through uh, a certain level and then as they get to certain hit point thresholds after they stop leveling, uh, there's like these little letters. Well, that's what these correspond to. So now, demi-humans, uh, they, uh, <laughs> okay, these guys, they don't change their, um, they don't change what they hit until they get to uh, the uh, milestone A which is after they've gone to ninth level. So they very are very slow to rise in terms of their ability to hit, uh, hit things. Uh, so A through M. Now, in the meantime, you'll notice that all the other classes have their various levels that they go through. And it's not surprising that the fighters... Uh, they uh, roll, they basically have to roll, uh, you know, they basically can hit, uh, okay, they basically can hit just about anything uh, on a, uh, on a roll. Now, uh, misses only on a natural one so add the number shown to the total damage done by the attack so um armor class one the only time they miss is if they roll a zero armor class or if they roll a one armor class two as long as they hit they automatically just add one point of damage um armor class three as long as they hit, they add two points of damage. And that's something that for fighters begins as early as uh, uh, when they get to milestone B. When they get uh, 10 to 12, uh, they're adding two points to an armor class 19 if they hit it. And they're adding additional damage by the time they get to 34, 34th level, they're adding additional damage to any creature they hit that is armor class 1 or better. Now you'll notice that this is a two-tiered table. So 
the armor classes go all the way from 19, which is a really horrible armor class, down to zero. And then they go all the way to negative 20. Why do they go to negative 20? Well, because there are some things like big dragons that are really, 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 really hard to hit. And um, so they may have a an armor class of something like a negative 17 or something like that. So it's really, really uh, a crazy armor class system. And that's one of the most difficult things to get used to in combat in or in the uh, first edition or original edition D&D altogether is how this silly um, AC system works. But it's kind of fun to look at and the good thing like I said is that the character sheet does all the calculations for you. You just click the uh, macro for your attack roll and it tells you what armor class you hit. And as long as that number uh, it matches or is below the armor class of your target than you hit. So uh, that's the that's the thing. All right. Well, that is going to do it for uh, today. Uh, thank you very much for stopping by for this History of D&D Weekly. I have been DM Galabond. If you like what we do on this channel and you're interested in playing a game that is using the original D&D rules, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, click the post notification bell so you'll hear about all the times that we drop, um, drop content on the channel. All right, everybody. I want to thank you again for stopping by. Uh, hope you have a wonderful week, and we will see you here next week. Good night, everyone.